you have to unmute, ma. She's a dear. Yes, sir. <laughs> Sorry, yes, I've unmuted. Thanks. In Jesus' name, our Father and our God, we thank you for yet another opportunity to gather to study your word, to understand your heart. We thank you for the opportunity that you have given us in the past and this opportunity which we have been looking forward to. Lord, we're so grateful to you. Father, as we learn today, we pray, O Jehovah, that you open our understanding, give us wisdom, O Lord, that everything we hear, O Lord, will be translated by the Spirit so that each and every one of us will hear clearly in one accord in Jesus' name. Amen. We pray for wisdom for your son who is going to lead us, Pastor Daily Matthews, that you give him wisdom. Open your word especially to him that the hidden things that even he did not know before will be revealed to him even as he teaches us today in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, eternal rock of ages, for it's in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 Thank you, God's people. I'm glad that we're all here once more um, to hear God's word. Okay, we have been talking on covenants and we've been looking at the old covenant versus the new covenant. Uh, not really versus the new covenant, yeah, but, uh, but the old covenant in the light of the new and in the light of the kingdom of God because um, the whole matter is about the kingdom. But... Let's not get ahead of ourselves. <clears throat> um, so we'll be looking at um, um, the new covenant, I mean, rather the old covenant and what it is constituted by. But before we do that, I had it in mind this morning to, or rather this, uh, it's evening, my time here. I have it in mind this evening to... Um, to remind us of the purpose of um, the law and um, yeah, why did God set the law there? Why is the law there? Why are we even making a comparison? Um, we need to understand that the issue at hand is not just about morality because when the average Pentecostal Christian or even an evangelical Christian hears that is knowledgeable to some extent. Um, here, when they hear the issue of the law um, versus grace, they usually make it a matter of morality. When we were in school, we confused tradition with the law. You say no more traditions, no more, you know. So our ladies can wear trousers. You know, we are not under the law. You know, that was what we made it all about to a great extent. No more tradition. Our ladies can open their ears, hairs, you know, to worship. They can perm, you can perm your hair, you can have your jerry calls. You know, we, we, we made it a matter of modernity versus conservatism. I mean, being conservative in your dressing and your appearance and in your in demeanors. That was what we made it a matter. So we felt that the law was that. But the law... It's much more than that. That's not even the law. When you talk about the law, when you talk about Moses, when you talk about the precepts, when you talk about um, what other name do you call the law? Do you use for the old covenant? When you talk about Hagar, when you talk about Ishmael, you know, those are types and words that are used for the law. It's beyond personal appearance. And we will even see that when it comes to um, the Christian faith, we also have our injunctions and our laws. There are laws of the New Testament. And the law, the basic law of the New Testament is the law of love. You understand? So the law is not about um, uh, morality, where these don't wear that. I don't know how many people experienced that when they were growing up in the faith, that where you got, where they were teaching about law and grace, and then you all made it a matter of physical appearance or sin or no sin you know, to break out of um, some type of traditions that had, that had like impeded your liberty. You know, that was, I many people had that experience growing up in the faith, you know. If we didn't have it, that means we're not very idealistic. We're just, uh, okay, Siamese, okay, yeah. Yeah, Siamese did, yeah. Sister, okay, Auntie Kemi did, yeah. You know, 
Yes, okay, Sister Sarah, Sister Sarah did study indeed. Yeah, good, fantastic, quite a number of us. Yeah, and that's that's the way it is. Um, you know, we thought that way, but it, it, the law has nothing to do with that. Nothing to do with that because most of the, if you look at the law, at the basics of the law, yeah, Sister Sheya Falabi, yeah, you know, if you look at the law, you will discover that some of the things espoused by the law are also commandments mm -hmm. in the feet. You have to unmute. Somebody is mm -hmm. unmuted and is talking. Pastor Godfrey, you need to uh, uh, mute. Okay, yeah, thank you. Now, so, so um, because the law is a covenant, like we have seen, right from Genesis, I mean, Exodus chapter 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, and then by 24, you would see that God made a covenant with Israel. Yeah, I think in 20 or 19, uh, Moses went up, up to the mountain to get the tables of the law, which had to do with the moral requirements of God. Those moral requirements of God had not been nullified. Did you get that? They have not, because there is no place in Christianity for thou shalt commit, thou shalt lie. There is no place in Christianity that says thou shalt commit adultery. There is no grounds in Christianity that says thou shalt bear false witness. You get. So, but it's just that. But while I don't want to get ahead of myself, you know, the the um, but it's the way we meet those requirements that have been stylishly modified. I will use the word stylishly modified mm -hmm. by the Lord in the New Testament. So, um, so but law. What what is the law? Why is there so much argument? It's about uh, between the between uh, proponents of the law, especially in the days of the apostles and the proponents of uh, Judaism, Judaism. And then in between them, the proponents of syncretic Christianity. Syncretic Christianity means, you know, when you synchronize, that's you sync. We call it sync today. You sync your phone, so you join. So it means to join. That's why you have synagogue also, you know, goji, education, learning, sync. You know, you know, we come together to learn synagogue. So it was not a, it's not a Hebrew name. It's a, it's a, I think it's a Greek, Greek. that's Greek. Now, you have right down in the middle, those who said, okay, you can have faith in Jesus Christ, but you also need to be circumcised. You would see all of that in scripture. Now, it is the, 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 the issue has to do with the inheritance. What, in, what are they inheriting here? Not much of the inheritance, a little bit of the one we did in convention. That one was a little larger. But this one is the who inherits righteousness. Who can... On what basis can a man stand before God without any sense of guilt? That's the that's the that's the, that's the tension point. On what basis do we stand? Be, who are the people that will be called the people of God now, based on their entrance in through a particular door open? Are we going in through circumcision, which is the law? You know, because you entered in into the old covenant, which is the covenant. What the covenant which God made with old Israel when they came out of Egypt. Three months after they came out of Egypt, God made that covenant with them. We all saw that covenant. They stood before the mountain. Sinai, it's also called Sinai, while Greece is called Zion. By the time we get into the tabernacles and the temples, we begin to understand why one is called uh, Sinai, the other one is called Zion. Now, so, 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 you, you, uh, so, so who, who inherits the righteousness. What is righteousness? Righteousness is citizenship. Who inherits citizenship? Who are the people of God? Who, who is qualified to be the to be called the people of God? Is it the Jews? Is it the is it the new faith? Or is it those who stand in the middle ground and say, okay, you can mix the two? And all that. Now, what two are you mixing? Is it even the two of okay, you are doing the things that obviously were commanded in the old covenant, you will see that it is no. Uh, um, you know, the old covenant is a covenant. It's a, it's not a, just a set of rules. It's not just a set of rules. It's a covenant that um, tells you about how to relate with God, how to be a person of God. You know, Abraham was a, was not in relationship with God at the beginning, in the beginning. But God God called him, and then later, later, God gave him circumcision, you know, and uh, later, um, and then the Israel came, 
Israel came about. Now, the way after God made a, that, that old covenant with Israel concerning the laws, you know, from 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, he told, told them about the laws, and there were so many other laws after, after that place, in Numbers, in Leviticus, in Deuteronomy. You see so many other laws. Now, um, so, but when this when this covenant was about to be made with them, which was called the, the Old Covenant, what God said was, what Moses said, that these are the covenants which the Lord God has made with you concerning these things. And he asked them, he said, he, 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 he read the, the, the laws to them, and he said, all the people answered, all the all that the Lord has said we will do. So it was a covenant based on doing those things. Now, but apart from doing, the first deed was that they were going to enter in into relationship with God by circumcision. That's how you enter into the old covenant. But when the, when the apostles came, they began to talk about coming into the covenant with God. This is a new way. That's what Christ came to do. He came to establish a new way of coming into Christ. In establishing that new way, he did not leave the old way on. He closed that door. He shut that door. He, he, he obliterated it. He, 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 he confined it into antiquity. You know, I don't know under whatever any other negative word you can use. You know, he destroyed it. He finished it. And then he opened another way of coming into God which is the way of faith in him. You know, just as Israel had faith in that in the bullock that was killed to ratify or to establish the old covenant in Genesis, I mean, Exodus 24, so also you have to believe in the works, in the death, the burial, the resurrection of Jesus Christ in the new covenant. And then how you would enter would be by believing with your heart and confessing with your mouth that Jesus Christ is has died for you and that he rose again. Not just that Jesus is Lord, that he died and then he rose again. He died for our sins and rose for our justification. And you see all of that in, 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 uh, in Romans chapter 4. You see that in Romans chapter 10, verse 17. You know, by faith, it is by faith that we're coming. Then um, Ephesians chapter 2, 6, 7, 8. You know, you see all of those scriptures there. Yeah, Romans 4, 26, thank you. Now, so so that's the way in which, you know, so so th those are the issues. It's not a matter of law, of, of morality. It's a matter of the system. There was a system that was destroyed. When Jesus Christ died, the Bible says, he said, it is finished. What was finished? It was finished with the old covenant. And then, so, um, and then the Bible said, the the veil of the temple was rent from top to bottom. We'll see that when we begin to get into temple, we'll see the significance of that. When we begin to get into temples, we'll consider the temple of uh, Moses, the, uh, I mean, rather, the tabernacle of Moses, you know, the tabernacle of David, we'll consider the tabernacle, temple of Solomon, then we'll consider some other prophetic temples, that which Ezekiel saw, that which uh, Zechariah saw, and all that, because they were very, very important, pivotal for us to, in order for us to understand the New Testament and the kingdom age, not just the New Testament, the kingdom, because the fullness of the New Testament is the kingdom age established in us and established in the systems of the earth. That, you know, so when you know that, you don't need too much prophecy to be able to understand how things would go in the world around us and all that. So, so, um, so these people began to, ex I mean, to proclaim. It is a new way. Now, you can imagine Jews. Jews were more violent than, maybe, okay, maybe you can compare them to Mus Muslims of today, to the Muslims of today, uh, to the Muslims of Kano. I, when I lived in Sokoto, I used to amuse myself whenever I, I strolled on the road. I said, if you want to live, if you want to die now, 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 anybody that wants to die now, just go to Sokoto Market and tear the Quran. Just, you, just, just just do it five minutes you will you'll be singing hallelujah 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 or or just use or even open the quran in your hand as a christian you just open it and yeah you yeah you or rub it on your or put it on the ground before it even reaches the ground you see yourself in white and you can already know where you are you've gone you know <laughs> that's the way it's that's the way it is so like you want to leave anybody that wants to live where i am now wants to leave this place now just walk into a supermarket and tap a lady on the side, and then uh, you can be sure that you are going. 
or you know you are going because uh, you know the woman is the king in uh, the in this part of the western nations in america you can see get away with it you can see you know that one they will they, they only listen to them you don't you don't don't listen to the man <laughs> you know so so um so the new in the, the, the old covenant was was a system by which you come into god and now the new testament has come and these people are saying there's a new way that it is not about the law anymore. It is not about the law. So I was talking about the Jews and the fact that they were violent. So talking about, but making us to, trying to make us to see what challenges the apostles of those days faced, of the first century church. What they faced, because you're telling these people that it's no longer about the law. What they have practiced for about 1,500 years. You are telling them it's no longer by the law. Ah, these people that have, done all they could do to please God, you know, thinking that righteousness was by the works of the law, you know, and they are now telling them it is not so. No, they are not going to take that. So the matter was about righteousness. Who could stand before God? On what basis could you legally, assuredly stand before God and say, I am righteous? That righteousness is not holiness. It's not equal to holiness. Righteousness there. Um, in that sense, in, in that in the legal dis, the legal description of that or definition of that righteousness is the ability to stand go, before God and and you're okay. It's not like citizenship. It's like citizenship. Um, how do I? Okay, you know, you don't have to be perfect to be. You know, you're walking on the roads of Nigeria. You're walking on the roads of um, uh, Lagos, Abuja, um, London. Wherever you are, you're walking on, on the road on, and, and then you're a citizen, so you, you, you're okay. You don't have to be perfect, you know, in that, in this legal definition of righteousness. You are not perfect. You are not, it's not as if you have passed your exams. It's not as if you have done something great for government to recognize you. But nevertheless, you are a citizen. But just imagine your paper just expired and you are in a foreign land. And you have no basis of staying there, you know. So even though you are, you may, you may be the, you may, you may have just fasted for forty days. You have been holy. You have never thought evil. Not you know. But because your papers have expired, you have no sense of right standing in that place. That is righteousness. That is what righteousness means. Who can come before the Lord? Who shall come to the, to the? Uh, who, who shall ascend to your temple? Who shall ascend upon your holy mount? You know. And um, under the Lord, David said, he that has not lifted up his, his, uh, his, his um, mind or heart to vanity and all of that. You know, but he who can come in, according to the New Testament, what David said is also very, very uh, important and it's, it's uh, vital. But in the New Testament, the first way in which you enter is by faith in Christ Jesus, in what Christ has done. Because Christ is the inheritor of that covenant. So another question they are asking us is, okay, should Christ have made that covenant with his disciples and given them the commandment to make that covenant with other people? You know, is there a basis for that? You know, why shouldn't he have turned only to the Jews? Of course, all of them were Jews in that place where Jesus made the covenant. Because it, 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 it must be from Jews to the outside world. And then he, gave, he seemed to have given them the commandment to give it to the outside world. Is this supposed to go to the outside world? Especially when you consider that in the days of the apostles, after even before Jesus died, the Jews were already making disciples according to the law. You understand? They will, they will go to other nations and tell them to be circumcised, you know, and, and tell them about the Jehovah, their God. Our God is good to us. This is what I, by culture, by acculturization. And then that person will ask, oh, I love your God. You know, I know that. And then they will say, okay, how, how do I become um, one of you? And you say, okay, the only way you can become one of us is by circumcision. And then they will circumcise and then they will become Jews. That's what, they are the ones that you call the Hellenists. Um, they, you know, they, they will become Jews. Now, they were, um, uh, um, there's a word that is used for them, you know, um, proselytes. Yes, yeah, sorry. They were the ones you call Jewish proselytes. The Hellenists were um, uh, Jews who were 
like um, um, they, they were versed in the culture of the of the of the Greeks. Those are the Hellenists. You understand, like a Yoruba man who is a binto. Back in the days, we used to call them binto, you know, and all that. You know, say so, yeah, I've been to, I've been to. So they were try calling them binto, you know. So those are the Hellenists. But they started making uh, um, proselytes. They call them Jewish proselytes, and then those who disciple them into Jewish dom were called proselytizers. Now you remember the eunuch of of Ethiopia, uh, you know, uh, the eunuch of Ethiopia. That's that's. Um, um, that, that guy that was on his way that um, Stephen was commanded to go run to join his chariot. He was a he was he was a he was a Judaist because he had he was a, of the royal house, but he was a Judaist because um I mean you know they, they were, he had been proselytized. Even though of course there's a tradition that the royal house of Ethiopia came from Solomon, but let's leave that out. You know, but um, you remember that in Acts in chapter 2, there were many people that came together for the Feast of Pentecost from many nations, from Libya, from Crete, from uh, um, Phoenicia, from a lot of places. You know, they came, they were, they were some, some of them were Jews who lived in those foreign lands. Most of them were proselyt uh, proselytes. So even Jewishdom had started going out. You know, they started um, uh, being... Uh, they were already doing their own form of evangelism. You understand? So Christianity just came out and said, it's not that way anymore, you know, and then rendering their own way out. And then they were, so on what basis? So the apostles began to say, okay, it is on the, like you can look at I mean, um, um, Paul's example, you know, Paul, the books that were written by Paul, and that was one of the reasons why God preserved the books that were written by Paul more than the books probably that may have been written by any other. He just, he just adopted Paul's books as his books. Uh, some people that will tell us that the books of the Bible have been corrupted. We don't have enough of the books. I say, okay, are you sure God cannot provide, I mean, preserve his words? You know, is that what you're saying? You believe God is almighty. So is he only, so God is almighty, can preserve his books. Is that what you are telling us? And all that. So, so okay, just an aside now, even people who are saying today that, the people who are in the Holy Land who say they are Jews today are not really Jews. They didn't have understanding of what it means to come into Jewishdom. All you need to do is to be circumcised and to follow the law of Moses. In fact, from the old covenant, God had already given it to them that way. In fact, when they were coming out of Egypt, it was not all of them that came out of Egypt that were Jews. They were the mixed multitudes came with them. And then at Gilgal, by the time they were about to enter in, they were recircumcised again, into, about to enter into the promised land. They were recircumcised again. You know, and then of course you you also know that God told them, say, if there be any stranger among you who want to be a part of you. You know, take him, circumcise him, then he shall become a Jew. He shall become a Jew. He can adopt any of the tribes and say, I'm one of the tribes. So, so um, okay, they say today that it's um, Eastern European people from Poland, people from um, the Eastern Eastern Europe generally that, that came in and said they are Jews today. Well, they could be Jews because Jewishdom was not just a matter of tribe. It was also a matter of religious persuasion. You get so see they have done their DNA even then even though it was primarily a DNA matter but God also left an open an open door for anybody that will be circumcised to come into um, Jewishdom and they be recognized as, a, as an Israelite. So is it on that basis that you can have relationship with God? Paul said no. The apostles did not understand, they didn't get it. You know, this thing happened to them, you know, and they were not intellectuals like that. They were not, they were not very vast in the in the scriptures of the prophets and of the law, you know. So they didn't really, you know, even, even uh, some of them um were in the middle. Okay, you still have to be circumcised after you have reposed faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. And they were telling Gentiles, the Gentiles were. Yorubas and the, all of them that believed that were among them. Of course, the Yorubas were not there, Igbos were not there, but people from other countries, uh, Greeks, you know, uh, Syrians, and all of those people who were not uh, natural born Jews, you know, uh, and, they, and they, who were not proselytized, you know, they were, they, were tell, they were telling them that they still had to be circumcised. So in other words, you, you enter in by faith, but he now said you should, be, you should enter in by circumcision again. That was what God fought. God fought that. God fought that. And he fought it copiously through the very large writings of Paul. 
You know, if you read the scriptures of Paul, you see that what Jesus, what he was talking about in the book of Hebrews, he said, God who had sundry times and in diverse manners has spoken unto the fathers by the prophets, has in this last day spoken to us by his son, who he has made the heir of all things, by whom he also made the world, who be the effulgence of his glory and the express image of his, of his person or his likeness. When he had by himself cleansed our sins, he set himself down at the right-hand side of the majesty on I being made so much better. And the book of Hebrews, you see that it's about Christ being made so much better than the angels. That's what Hebrews 1 tells us. Than Moses, than the Levitical order, than the sacrifices, than the uh, tabernacle. You understand? And kept taking, telling us about how Christ is much better and greater than them, than all of those articles and um, of the old covenant, or the of the functionings of the old covenant. Now, so, and then, and then, um, so when Paul was going about telling the Gentiles that they did not need to be circumcised, they did not need to seek any recourse to the to coming into to the traditional God established way of coming into relationship with Him in the old covenant, which was circumcision, which was by circum the, the lady of course was not expected to be circumcised, just the man, you know, you know. So it must be by circumcision. Paul said, no, you do not have to be circumcised. If you were already a Jew and you're already circumcised and it is tradition of your fathers, you can do your circumcision, even though you don't need to be circumcised. Now, this circumcision is not, is not, or uh, was not, um, uh, what do you call it now? Um, the uh, cosmetic circumcision. And that was it, health based circumcision which we do today like i said last week it was circumcision that ceremonial circumcision you understand ceremonial circumcision you know like um um i just remembered something when an a, a new wife wants to come in into a yoruba person's house back in the days into a yoruba family you know they, she's just been married you know with all the gears on her head and all that they, as she was about to, as she, she was about to come into the house, they will pour water on her feet. That's ceremonial. But from then on, or before then, it's possible she had been into that house every time. So that one is just normal. So, so, so this circumcision that you're talking about is ceremonial, or what ceremonial circumcision? Paul said, "No, you don't have to do that." And I said, "What? What your, were your basis?" So Paul started and said, "Look at Abraham, our father. He was called right. He was called righteous." Genesis in chapter 15. He now challenged them and said, where did the law start from? They said Exodus chapter 24. Okay, so then, but Genesis, if righteousness were by the law, why would God tell a man who said who, who reposed faith in, in him that he was righteous? Okay, okay. He didn't have an answer for that. I'm just looking, because you know, Paul was an argumentative person. <laughs> very, very, and I love argument because you see, when you are convinced of your facts, then you can, the argument flows out from you, you know, so say, so why should God call a man righteous? Did God, was God sleeping? Was God, no, you know, say, well, because God had planned that those who, the children of Abraham will be both those who believe God and will be called righteous and those who will have circumcision. Now we told them, he said, when did God to tell Abraham, rather, I'm sorry, when did God tell Abraham that he, was, he should be circumcised? That was later, I think Genesis chapter 17, if I remember very well, or 20 something, you know, much later, this, this righteousness declaration, the righteous declaration of Abraham, you know, was in Genesis chapter 15. And what brought that about? The Bible said, and Abraham believed God. The Bible said, and God told him, I say, Abraham, I mean, let's 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 start from Genesis chapter 15. Say now the word of the Lord came unto Abraham in a vision, saying, Fear not, Abraham, I am thy shield and thy exceeding great reward. And Abraham said, What will thou give me? Seeing I am uh, childless, and the and the steward of my house is Eliezer of Damascus. And God said, No, 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 just the your 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 I mean rather the my child, my the hair of my house is my steward, you know, Eliezer of Damascus. And then God said, No, 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 Eliezer shall not be your hair in bed. I shall give you your own son. And say, come on, come on, come, come. And then look at the stars, see whether you can count it. And the Bible says, and Abraham believed God and God counted it to him for righteousness. So, it's, so he gave those kinds of, and then he told them, he said, if the law, it's, he now brought Sarah, he brought Sarah, he, he, he found a way to equate Sarah with 
um, um, the new covenant. And then, and then he, he equated Hagar to, uh, to the old covenant. And then he therefore, he, I mean, why did he do that? He said, because those who are under the law are under bondage. Because we are free. Now, he didn't say those who are doing God's moral requirements are under bondage. That's what we have taught. But those who are under that old covenant system, you know, they were under bondage. But we that are in faith in Christ, we're no longer under bondage. So we're children of the free woman. So there were two women, one a free woman, the other one a slave woman. So he now said, who inherited the house of the father? Is it or was it? The, the children, the, the, the child of the of the free woman, or the son of the, the son of the free woman, or the son of the bond woman. And I said, no, it was the son of the free woman, not the son of the woman. As the scripture has said, cast out the bond woman and his son and his sons. You know, all Nigerian. How many people know what Nigerian Christians have interpreted that to me? The bond woman. You have all called it that way. So everybody. The Muslims. The Muslims. The Muslims. Muslims. Is that right? But was that right? That's not scripturally right. I am not saying the Muslims were no. because <laughs> Islam was not even in the picture at all. Forget Islam. Islam came 600 years after, after Christ has died and done his work and the New Testament has been established and codified and the scriptures have been fully codified and finished. Islam came after that. So Islam was not even in the view. We can't, you see, one of the things we do is that we, we make uh, prophetic interpretations we make them our real interpretations. We make it, you know, but prophetic interpretation, maybe it, it, it's, it's wrong, you know, because, you know, you, 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 I mean, man, to, to make the, a prophetic interpretation, um, the fundamental interpretation of scripture is wrong. That, not that prophetic interpretation is wrong because, you know, um, you know, because that was our contextual interpretation of the word. We have um, Islam, Islamists and Christians. I mean, Islamists who are fighting us and say they, they own the God of Abraham. So it can be right in our context. You see, but in the scripture, the children of the bond woman were the Jews, not mm. the Muslims, because the Muslims were not in the view, you know. And then he talked about, he also used another word. So he said, the children of this, of the, of the, of the, of the, a free woman inherited the house. So we are the one that inherit the war, the house of righteousness. We are the one that is inheriting the, the house of um of God. You understand? We are the one that are the true citizens of the kingdom. Then he talked about Sinai and Zion. You know, what's Sinai? Sinai was where they got the 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 uh, the law. And when they were getting the law, and you see that in Hebrews chapter 12, when they were getting the law, it was in the midst of so much fearfulness. You can read from Exodus chapter, I think that's Exodus 20 there about, you know, it was so much that there was so much trumpet, earthquake, you know, lightning, striking, thunder, everything. There was commotion because God came down upon the mountain in great fearfulness. So much so that the Jews, I mean, the Israelites said, you know, the Israelites said, please, Moses, we can't talk to this God. You go to God and talk to him on our behalf. But so, 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 so that means the old covenant people, those who are in the old covenant, Paul said that those who are in the old covenant are relating to a, a, um, to a God of, a, a, to, to the Lord God in terror and in fearfulness. That was the revelation of God that they had. But you see, there was Zion also. Zion was the city of David. And when David got to Zion, he erected, he put the ark of God there. And uh, instead of worship that was based on the Moses tabernacle plat, uh, plat, I mean, pattern, it was the Zionic pattern that, Moses, I mean, that David was practicing. And uh, what was the Zionic um, uh, 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 pattern? He could approach the, the, uh, the ark, you know, under the... Um, the Moses pattern, which which continued into the tabernacle of Moses, you could not even enter. You can't even touch the mountain, and you could not when the when the when they left the mountain mountain and they erected the tabernacle in Shiloh. You know you could not go close to it. You see that Uzzah touched it, and you know the guy died. He was trying to save the ark, and then he got smote him. You know, but he said in Zion, you know, there were worshippers. David instituted. We're going to get there. Uh, oh, that's a very beautiful place to get to. David insisted 
a priesthood that will worship the beauty of, of holiness. You understand? And they worship that. It was a God that they could come near to. So, so I mean, Paul said, under the old covenant, you had a God that you could not move near to. But in the New Testament, you have a God that you could move near to. So, And then he looked at the prophet. He looked at Habakkuk that said, the just shall live by faith. He said, okay, God had prophesied to the prophets. Habakkuk and a lot of them that said, and then he said, uh, that the just shall live by faith, prophesying that there's going to come a time when a people will arise who would relate to God, whose basis of righteousness and right standing with God is going to be by faith in the work of Jesus Christ. And then he also he used quite a number of, um, of analogies, you know, to talk about the validity of the New Testament. There's, there's one that, that came in, but I, I believe I'll remember um, be before we finish this. So, so with many um, uh, um, arguments, Paul was able to argue to the uh, Jews who were hearing him that, see, this new way of Jesus Christ is the way in which we come into the kingdom of God. You can't come into the kingdom of God on the basis of Moses or the old covenant anymore. So it's not about any law. It's not about... Um, Okay, it's not about any law. It's not about any um, um, the morality of the of the old uh, of the old covenant. Now, maybe the the manual can do a little bit more justice to it. And then, of course, he also shared about a scripture of the prophet that said that um, I, I will call a people who are not my people. I'll call them my people. You understand? And where I rejected them, I will say here I am, and all that. You know, so and then he said the, the scriptures also said, Jesus Christ, I will declare your name among the Gentiles. That if Jesus was saying, I mean, the Messiah, of course, they didn't know it was Jesus, the Jews didn't know it was Jesus, but the Messiah in the, in the prophets, the prophetic story was saying that I will declare your name among the Gentiles. So he said, Why will he declare his name among the Gentiles if they were not his people? So the Gentiles are going to be a people of God, different, I mean, from um, accessing who have not accessed that citizenship via. Um, circumcision. Now, now let me also describe uh, righteousness this way uh, again. Um, let me describe righteousness again. It's like a child that is born in your house. Your baby is born in your house. That baby is righteous. The baby is not perfect. You want the baby to read engineering. You want the baby to read law. You want the baby to read accounting. You want the baby to read um, whatever you want them to read. You want them to become like this and like that. You have your laws. You have your desires for them. But they are just four years old and you love them with all kind of loving kindness. They are not perfect. They still break your plate. You get angry with them, but they are righteous in that house. They, that's what righteousness means in that legal frame. There, there's also a type of righteousness that means our works. So, but even though it is our works, it is not the works of the law. You get it is not the works of the law. The works of the law are works done ceremoniously in order to appease God with the old covenant mentality. You being in the old covenant, and then Paul had a lot of people who fought with him, who fought with him. They fought seriously with him, and then Paul thank God for Paul. You know that you know if we understand the scriptures and the workings of God, that you just put a day aside and just why you are praising God just for Paul. You just thank God for Paul. Thank God for Paul. Thank God for Paul, who endured a lot of hardship against himself. Misunderstood. He was misunderstood, you know? And when they understood him, they wanted to kill him the more. It was even better you misunderstood him than you understood him. Because if you understood him, you were going to kill him as a Jew back in his days, you know? So thank God for people like Paul. Now there was an issue, you know, uh, I think in Acts chapter 15, in Acts chapter 15, and he talked about it in Galatians also, when he said after 14 years, he went to, 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 uh, to Jerusalem. You know, the headquarters of the church was in Jerusalem, and it was because it, Jerusalem was in Judea, and this was among the Jews. So you may not even know the difference. You, 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 know, you won't even know the difference between a Christian and a Jew by just physically looking at them or by observing what they did. The only thing is, if you come to a particular meeting and you see these people behaving in some ways, uh, I mean, uh, worshiping God in a different way, so, oh, wow, this must be, they are Jews, but they, they, there's, a, there's something about them, you know? Or if you saw them raising the, 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 the leper in the name of Jesus of Nazareth, oh, wow. Otherwise, they went to the feasts, 
They went to Pas for Passover. They went for Pentecost. And God was not angry with that because they were Jews. You understand? That was their tradition. You understand? They didn't dress in certain ways. They didn't do certain things. God was not angry with them. But you see, God wanted them to by and by know that, see, this new way you have embraced, there are certain things you cannot do because eventually you, this work is going to go to the Gentiles. So what brought the, the, the fight between, um, there's, there were believers who are called Judaism. Those are the ones I said, I mean, they were in the middle. They were Judaism. Who felt that even after you have been born again, you have you have reposed faith in Christ Jesus, that you must be circumcised. That you must be circumcised. And Paul stood against these guys. Paul stood against them. Then he said at the time that he had to go to Jerusalem. You see that in, uh, in Galatians chapter 1. If you read all of Galatians chapter 1. We have a lot to do today. That's why I'm not, we're not opening scriptures. And time is already almost gone. Okay, even if we just got 10 minutes to introduce what we have to do. Because what I wanted to do is we're going to talk about the commandments today. You know, but um, somehow God will help us with that. We will not stay beyond, um, um, what's the time? I won't stay beyond my own one fifteen. My own fifteen. Here we go. All right. So... So, um, so Paul preached the Lord Jesus Christ, and he did not even refer to the law of Moses or the system of the old covenant to the people he preached to because they were gent I mean, who were Gentiles. Now, uh, but he said after a while he came to um, uh, Judea to the people who have been apostles before him to see, so lest he had run in vain, you know, and all that. Uh, what does he mean by running in vain? Running vain means that if I preach the wrong message, she wanted to come testify. I mean, to ask them. And then, because there were some other people from Judea who had come to trouble, I mean, they had gone abroad to trouble people that he had been teaching. They say, ah, this man that is calling your, you, I mean, that is calling himself your apostle. Now, like they tell you now, he, he say, he talk say, uh, except, I mean, I mean, except people repose faith in Christ. Not the only faith in Christ, so we too will be followers of Jesus. So, but we still do circumcision according to the law. You know, if we get righteousness without the law now, so that was what they were saying. And then Paul had to fight them seriously and thank God for Paul. He fought and he broke through. You know, and uh, so in, in Acts in chapter 15, there was, a, there was a meeting. I mean, Paul talked about it the, when Paul came to um, to them, when Paul came to, um, can should we read? Let's read uh, Acts chapter fifteen. Can somebody read Acts fifteen for us? Acts fifteen, beginning from verse one. Oh, no, okay, all one, right. Uh, yeah, one verse. Okay. okay, can we start from verse one? New King James Version. Right. And certain men came down from Judea and taught the brethren, unless you are circumcised according to the custom of Moses, you cannot be saved. Therefore, when Paul and Barnabas had no small dissension and dispute with them, they determined that Paul and Barnabas and certain others of them should go up to Jerusalem to the apostles and elders about this question. So being sent on their way by the church, they passed through Phoenicia and Samaria, describing the conversion of the Gentiles, and they caused great joy to all the brethren. And when they had come to Jerusalem, they were received by the church and the apostles and the elders. And they reported all things that God had done with them. But some of the sect of the Pharisees who believed rose up saying. So, so you, you can imagine some of the sects of the Pharisees who believed. Those were the one in the middle ground. They, they were Christians, but they were Pharisees. Yeah, they believed in Christ Jesus. Yes. I should continue? Yes, ma'am. Okay. But some of the sect of the Pharisees who believed rose up saying, 
it is necessary to circumcise them and to command them to keep the law of Moses. Now, the apostles and elders came together to consider this matter. And when there had been much dispute, Peter rose up and said to them, Men and brethren, you know that a good while ago, God chose among us that by my mouth the Gentiles should hear the word of the gospel and believe. So God, who knows the heart, acknowledged them by giving them the Holy Spirit, just as he, had, just as he did to us, and made no distinction between us and them, purifying their hearts by faith. Now therefore, why do you test God by putting a yoke on the neck of the disciples, which neither our fathers nor we were able to bear? But we believe that through the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, we shall be saved in the same manner as they. All right. Okay. Then so, all the, okay. Yeah, continue, man. Continue. Oh. Then all the multitude kept silent and listened to Barnabas and Paul declaring how many miracles and wonders God had worked through them among the Gentiles. And after they had become silent, James answered saying, men and brethren, listen to me. Simon had declared how God at the first, at the first visited the Gentiles to take out of them a people for his name. And with this, the words of the prophets agree. Yeah. Just as it is written. Hmm. Continue, I should continue, sir. Yes. After this, I will return and will build the tabernacle of David, mm. which has fallen down. Yes. I will rebuild its ruins. Mm -hmm. I will set it up so that the rest of mankind may seek the Lord. Yeah. Even all the Gentiles who are called by my name, says the Lord who does all these things. Hallelujah. Yeah. Known to God. Okay. Okay. No, known to God are all his works from the beginning of creation up until now. That's what you're about to read. Now, yes. So if we follow that scripture, we'll know that this is what um um are people dropping out because of uh, internet or what? This is very important because where we're going, you know, this may sound like things we already know and all that, you know, but um, but it's very important to where we're going because we're going to kingdom. We're going to the establishment of the kingdom of God and how that is going to happen on the, in the nations. And if we don't understand these depths, it is very, very possible that um, um, that um, we we may not get it right when we get to um, the kingdom, um, the establishment of the kingdom of God in the nations and all that. Now, so um, so the the, the 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 church met, the general church met, council met. And after the church met, then um, the uh, the leaders met, then then the smaller group met, and then they gave the right hand of fellowship to Paul and Barnabas, and they confirmed their works among the nations and said, "Yes, you are right. You are right." That was a very significant um, that was a very significant time in church history. So because there was a consensus that what Paul preached was right, if Paul had had agreed with them, you will not be saved today. You will not be saved. You will be a second class. They may, they may say, okay, Christianity will just be like, okay, you are saved, but you have to be circumcised. Of course, the women will not be circumcised, but the men will have to be circumcised. Now, if your father was not circumcised, then you cannot be Christian. Because there's no other way women will enter other than through their fathers who are circumcised. <laughs> you understand? You cannot be a Christian. You know, you can't be a Christian if you were not I and mean, your father was not circumcised, or as a man, you were not circumcised. So they fought that, and they, thank God they won the battle. So let's um, go back to our teaching and studying about the law. Um, we said that what we call the old covenant, uh, you can broadly, I mean, um, put them in three categories: the what you call the the law, uh, which you call the the commandments, rather the commandments. Then the worship of Israel, then the holy days of Israel. Can I run through it again? The commandments, the uh, worship of Israel, and the holy days of Israel. 
Okay. Under the commandments, you have three types, three types of laws. Number one, you have the Ten Commandments, which are the constitution of the old covenant. You know, the one, the the every other thing was law, were laws, laws and bylaws in in and all that. But this one was the constitution of Israel. Ten Commandments. Then you have the social laws. Then you have the ceremonial laws. Then after that, you now have what you call the second category is worship of Israel. And under the worship of Israel, you have the priest, the, the priesthood, which involves the high priest and the priest. And you have the Levitical, I mean, you have the high priest, you have the um sorry, I'm missing something and I'm mixing it together. Under the worship of Israel, you have the priesthood, you have the tabernacle or temples, then you have the sacrifices. And then under this under the priesthood, you have the high priest and the and the priest, and then the Levitical order. Then you have um under the tabernacle, we're going to consider the tabernacle of Moses. And if we don't finish, no problem. We can always do that at another set, you know, with any other if you have other opportunities to because I can see that. I'm already telling myself that, you know, let's be honest, I don't think you can finish this. <laughs> Praise God. You know, um, because we're the, talking about the temple alone, and this is very sweet for us to know, this temple thing, this because that's the way you understand the book of Revelation. You can, okay, okay, let, let me just, an aside here. They said, Paul, I mean, John said, and I had a great voice, like the voice of many waters, and I saw the Son of Man walking, I looked behind me and I saw the this one like on the son of man, and his hair was as white as wool, and he was wearing a, 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 a white garment, and he had a, 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 a like a belt around his chest, golden, you know, and his feet was like burnished brass. And I saw, and I saw him walking in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks. How are you going to understand that? How are you going to understand when he said the the fourth beast? No, the third beast went and said, a measure of wheat for a penny, and and uh, two, I mean three measures of barley for a penny. Touch not the oil and the wine. How are you going to understand that? People say, oh, there's going to be um, famine. By the time we get there, we just see that wow, we just hear a sign. Oh, so this is it. Actually, we're going through a lot of this is it in this. Um, Maybe what we'll, I don't know what we'll do, but uh, let's just keep going. Uh, you know, so if we can't um, finish it, then we end. Then we we'll do a part B. We end and go on a holiday if it's agreed by God's people. I can't decide that. You know, we'll go on a holiday and then we we'll come back again and then we we'll continue. You know, especially when it comes to those tabernacles and all that. You know, and uh, so it's very it's very important that we take them, have enough time on them. So. You then you now come to the holy days. Okay, have I talked about that? Okay, so under the worship of Israel, you know, I told you about the priesthood, which contains three levels of priests, high priest, um, the priests, and then the Levitical order, and the Levites. Then you have um you have um uh the temples, and under the temples, you have tabernacle of Moses, tabernacle of David, temple of Solomon. And then you're going to see all the other versions of the of the temple that were seen in the visions, in visions by the apostles, you know. So you we're going through all of that. Then then we now come to the sacrifices. Oh wow, beautiful things. The sacrifices. You see yourself as a priest, really. You see, because the Bible says we are a royal priesthood. But people you don't know royal priesthood. So you just so you don't know about the priesthood part. There you just see the royalty. Say, I'm a king. I'm a king. I dominate. I dominate. I have all the money. I have authority. I have this. And we have been saying we have all of that and we have not had anything. And Muslims in Nigeria have been dominating matters. And you have not dominated anything. So what's the scripture saying? Is God a liar? Even when... <laughs> okay, let's not go into Nigeria. You know, so what... what you know, so, so when we get into all of this, you know, say, oh, wow. So this is what the scriptures are saying. You know, then we get into the holy days of Israel. We, you know, we'll talk about sabbatic principles there and then we'll talk about all of them, you know. So, 
in the tabernacle, which I mean, the commandments which I am introducing today, this one on one, about fourteen more minutes, um, which I'm introducing today, you have the Ten Commandments, and uh, under the Ten Commandments, we have read the Ten Commandments before, and then we know all what the Ten Commandments said. I think Ten Commandments in Exodus twenty, am I right? And somebody read the Ten Commandments out to us again. Sorry, when I was coming to, although I should have, I mean, I should have bought another one. I'm using my phone for camera, and all my computers are busy. Exodus twenty. Yeah. Yeah, and I'll see. Then God gave the people all these instructions. Yeah. I am the Lord God who rescued you from the land of Egypt, the place of slavery. You must not have any other God but me. You must not make for yourself an idol of any kind or an image of, of anything in the heavens or on the earth or in the sea. You must not bow down to them or worship them. For I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God who will not tolerate your affection for any other gods. I lay the sins of the parents upon their children. The entire family is affected, even children in the third and fourth generations of those who reject me. But I lavish unfailing love for a thousand generations on those who love me and obey my commands. You must not misuse the name of the Lord your God. The Lord will not let you go unpunished if you misuse his name. Remember to observe the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. You have six days each week for your ordinary work. For the seventh day is a Sabbath day of rest, dedicated to the Lord your God. On that day, no one in your household may do any work. This includes you, your sons and your daughters, your male and female servants, your livestock and any foreigners living amongst you. For in the six days, the Lord made the heavens, the earth, the sea and everything in them. But on the seventh day, he rested. This is why the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and set it apart as holy. Honor your mother and your father, then you will live long then you will live a long, full life in the land the Lord your God is giving you. You must not murder. You must not commit adultery. You must not steal. You must not testify falsely against your neighbor, uh, against your yeah. You must not cover your neighbor's wife, male or female servant, ox or donkey, or anything else that belongs to your neighbor. Should I go on? Yep. Yeah. Yes, sir. When the people heard the thunder and the loud blast of the ram's horn, and when they saw the flashes of lightning and the smoke billowing from the mountain, they stood at a distance, trembling with fear. And they said to Moses, you speak to us and we will listen, but don't let God speak directly to us or we will die. Don't be afraid, Moses answered them, for God has come in this way to test you and so that your fear of him will keep you from sinning. As the people stood in the distance, Moses approached the dark cloud where God was. Thank you. Thank you very much, man. God bless you. Yeah. So we can see the Ten Commandments in all the, you know, when, when people who say um, uh, the, oh, the new covenant does not agree with the law, the commandment, the morality of the, of the old covenant. Is there any way in the new covenant that God says, you shall make an image to me? Is there any way in the new covenant that God says, commit adultery? No. No, no way. In fact, what we call the new covenant is actually the beginning of the kingdom. The stopgap in between the law and the kingdom. When Jesus Christ came, just like Moses went to a mountain, Jesus also went to a mountain. They didn't mention the name of the mountain. It was important that they didn't mention it because, um, because they were not supposed to. Was, the New Testament was not a physical thing. Yeah, the Old Covenant was also spiritual, but it tended to certain physical things, you know, but the New was absolutely spiritual. So that's why they didn't mention I'm sure that mountain had a name. Even in Ibadan, you have Oko, Oko, Shapati, you have uh, different kinds of hills and all of them, or you know, so that was called Shepherd's Hill back then. You know, but so they didn't mention this one. And Jesus, the Bible said, he began to give the constitution of the kingdom. 
that he came for. You see, there are people who, who are, they are professionals, <laughs> clean cut suit wearing guys who are apostles of the new covenant, who do not understand that the new covenant itself is a kingdom thing. So they, they, you know, what they do is that they have rejected. These are the hyper grace people. They are the hyper grace people. They are the hyper new creation people. I, I grew up as a new creation person. In fact, back about 30 something years ago, my favorite scripture was 2 Corinthians 5, verse 17. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, a new creation, all things are passed. Behold, all things are become. That revelation is still inside me till today. That's why today, today, when you ask me, which state are you from? I would say, my parents are from Ondozi. They say, ah, so where are you from? I say, well, I'm from heaven. That revelation, 1988. That was my first revelation. 1988. Yeah, 88. So I'm a new creation guy. But there are guys who are... <laughs> you know, I also believe in education that, you know, because I, in my meditation was many years back, the Lord, you know, I, I saw myself, my father, you know, I have a way of looking like my father, you know, and um, so there was an argument between my father and I, and then, and then, and then God, my father and God, in my meditation, as I meditated, I meditated for many months on that scripture, not that I stayed in one place, but, you know, up and on. So one of my meditations, I saw the Lord come and my and Mr. Ayo Matthews come and then and then I was in the middle and there was an argument I say Dele is my son God told my father you see that Dele? and my son I, and my dad said no it's my son I said no 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 God said it's my son then there was an argument and then somebody came and said okay God take the part that is your own and let Mr. Matthews have the part that looks like him I want to ask you which part did Mr. Matthews go home with The body. Add, the body. So physical. Yeah, the body. So what? What? In what state will that body be if God had, re had removed the one that looked like Him? Lifeless, dead. Yeah. A cause. To be a cause, a dead body. So why do we keep saying I am of this tribe? I am of that tribe. When the real you is actually from heaven. From God. That's one of the things that took me away from the all this covenant with this. My father, my parents made this covenant. My this, it's 1988. I am a new Christian. He said, say, therefore, we know no man after the flesh. Even though we have known Christ after the flesh, henceforth know we him no more after the flesh. Therefore, if any man is in Christ, as confessed Christ, is no longer the man you had seen before. Is a new creation. And I knew that my body didn't have been black all my life. Somebody within the real man changed. So I belong. I came from my father in the spirit, not from my father in the physical. That was my revelation. So there are some people that believe that, okay, they, they, they call themselves New Testament ministers. They, they, they have not understood the context within which the New Testament is, is, is discussed or formed in scripture. That context is in the context of the kingdom. So these guys will come and tell you that when Jesus was preaching to in Mark, to Mark, Luke, and John, that we are not supposed to take any, uh, we're not supposed to put anything, um, uh, how do you say it now? That, uh, sorry, that's that, that call. That, that we're not supposed to put any importance on the words of Jesus Christ. When, when he was preaching in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. We're not supposed to put anything, any importance on his words. Maybe I should just have answered so that she could rest. You know, because they said he was teaching before he died. You understand? And that until he died, the, the New Testament did not begin. Did you get that? So until he died, the New Testament. Hello, Reverend Mrs. I am at it. I'm teaching online. I'm teaching. And that's why I kept cutting it. I'll call you immediately after.
Okay, all right. All right. All right. Praise God. I'm so sorry for that. Please, please uh, those who will post my this in, please make sure we edit this out because I know she will keep calling. You know, so that's my... All right. Um. So they said, okay, what Jesus was saying was before he died. So there was no New Testament. So he was teaching under the law. Well, not teaching under the law. Jesus' message was kingdom, the kingdom of God. So he was setting the agenda for the kingdom. So he went to the mountain and he said, and I want to ask a question after saying this. And he said, you have heard of, you have heard before that it was said, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. But I tell you, love your enemies. Do good to those who hate you and pray for those who despitefully use you. When he said, you have heard that it was said before, what was he saying, talking about? Please, who can... The law. The law. The law. The law. He was talking about the law. No. Yes. No. So, if he was talking about the law, and he said, you have heard that it was said before, but now, I say unto you, is that not relevant to us? What these guys will make it so that the only thing they ever take from Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John are the promises. Therefore, if any man say, uh, if any man will believe in his heart that um, it, whosoever shall say this matter, be that removed, uh, be that cast in the sin, I shall not doubt in the Sabbath, shall be that what you say, I shall come to pass, I have whatsoever I say. You know, that's all they ever take out of, uh, you know, out of the New Testament. I mean, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. The, uh, okay, um, you knock and it shall be opened unto you. That's all. And then Jesus healed them all. That's what they ever take. They have missed the entire thing totally. I'm saying this so that you do not miss the scriptures. Jesus came to talk about the kingdom. The kingdom of God was here. That was what he said. You know, so, you know, so what the old covenant spoke about the kingdom, he spoke. What the old, what, um, what he was saying, now he was not giving other laws. I mean, a new constitution. Of based on the kingdom that is that is for the kingdom, you know. So that's what. Um, and then he said, "You have heard that it was said, thou shalt not commit adultery.' But I say unto you, if you as much as look at a woman with lust for her in your heart, you have already committed adultery." So which one was higher, Moses' law, Jesus' law? I'm asking a question. Jesus law. Jesus law. Jesus law. Because in Moses, in you can Lord. do anything you can do in your brain. You have not sinned. <laughs> yes. You can do anything you want to do in your brain. You have not sinned. But Jesus said, if you as much as think, and then some people come and tell us that the new, the old, the new covenant does not have any morality. Because they don't understand. All they ever read is Pauline doctrines. And they even read Pauline doctrines wrongly because paul said of which i have told you and i told you before that those who do these things shall not inherit the kingdom see what paul was teaching the parts p-a-r-t of the church of god the part of the church of god within the kingdom let me ah, let me explain it this way you know these people just got, God just found a people for them for himself among the Gentiles and then the Jews who will believe. This is a new sect. Let's call it sect. This is a new way of life. They have just believed in Christ. The, the, the covenants of God have been fulfilled in them. Have been fulfilled in them. Okay, so Paul was giving the rudiment, the foundation. That's what Ephesians tells us. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 10 there about says that but we have been built upon the foundation of the apostles and the prophets, Jesus and what he did for us, being the chief cornerstone. You don't, you don't build your house to the foundation and then bring your, you don't know, put your furniture on it, say, ah, yes, I, we have finished the house, so everybody come and rejoice with us. People who come to rejoice, you just wonder, ah, where is the house? So this is the house now, foundation. So a lot of people are just boasting on the foundation. 
They don't, the New Testament is the foundation for the kingdom. You understand? What God wants to be king, that's what the kingdom means. Just it's not a new sect. You know, and I told you about, I told us before that, you know, we have three, you know, the evangelical, the Pentecostal, and then the kingdom, or sonship, or you know, and all of that. Or the third day church and all that. So the, that New Testament is the is the foundation. Okay, uh, okay I'm, I should be true now. So it's the foundation. So when people say they, they reject the sayings of Jesus Christ, if you go to these hyper grace people, that you, you may not know them because you just you don't really you have not gone deep into them. If you go to them, they tell you they reject all that Jesus said in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and he was preaching to old covenant people. He was giving foundation of kingdom. He was telling you the height, or rather, he was declaring, not even just the foundation, he was declaring the heights, the ideal of the kingdom. He said, you will get to a place that is not the law of God or the societal inappropriacy of it that will not make you to go and desire your neighbor's wife. He says, it is from your heart. There will be a power that will, that will be controlling you that will not make you to do it. So he was telling the Jews, as well as we even do that, you know, the kingdom that I'm talking about, oh, you have already sinned. So his own was even higher. How do, the old covenant said, the old covenant helps us to assuage our our, 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 our our anger. He says, a toot for a toot, you know. But Jesus Christ said, love your enemies. It's hard. Do good to those who hate you. Ah, Somebody just slap you. Bah, bah. Somebody just talk evil against you. Somebody just uh, try to, you know, to minimize your influence in a particular area and all of that. And then you, 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 you lay down to pray in the night and God said, pray for this person. If this person needs help in this area, I say, no, no, I'm not praying. You know? So how do we meet the law, the, the, the commandment in the New Testament? We will, um, that's where we'll start next week. I hope I remember uh, this. Um, Stephanie, please remind me. I will, I will note it on my put it on my notes. Now that how the law is fulfilled is in Romans chapter eight. Um, I think verse one to four. And let me try to quote it. Um, there is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do. In that it was weak through the flesh, God having sent his son, his son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin, condemned sin in the flesh so that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in me who walk not after the flesh but after the spirit. Did you see that? So there's a righteousness which the law seek, sought to establish inside of that righteousness that I'm not talking about, right doing. But you say you don't need to go to the old covenant of Moses or even the Ten Commandments of Moses. You know, in fact, Jesus had declared, declared something higher. He said, but he says, if you walk in the spirit, if you walk in the dictate of your spirit, of your believer's spirit, if you walk in the, on the dictate of that, I will talk about walking in the spirit next week because of time. Now, he says, you will not you will not walk in the flesh. Because when you walk in the flesh, is when you need the law of Moses. Because you, when you want to commit, uh, you want to lie, you say, ah, thou shalt not lie. But there's, there's an engine that is at work in you that does not even make you lie at all in the first place. So, and that engine is the prompt of the spirit. So, when you walk in the spirit, you shall not fulfill the the the, uh, the works of the flesh. You understand? I don't know whether I'm able to make any communication I just uh, do we have any questions? Okay, is it that this thing is so technical that people are not getting it because I'm seeing? Okay, let me just um, avoid that. I wanted to make an observation here. Yeah. All right. Do we have any questions? Do we have questions? Okay, if you don't have questions, or if you think that maybe having talking about the questions now would overstretch our time you can send it to me online all right let's just open our uh, uh, this and pray this and pray in the holy ghost and then bring our communion materials together Brando na hike den sa susto da da hike den kushenda da ba brani to susto zunega 
Lord, I'll pray for that for the communion materials and then we'll just take it, take them on our own um, because of time. Heavenly Father, Lord, we pray for the communion uh, emblems before us. We ask that you make the body, I mean, the bread or the biscuit that we have said before you are the body of the Lord, and then that you make the drink that we have said before you, make it as the blood of Jesus. Father, let, uh, we, you say we should do this uh, anytime, one, as frequently as we want to, um, to show the Lord's death until he comes. And we're praying that in Mojo, that the benefits of the Lord's death will, will, will come upon us in Jesus' name. And Amen. that life will be generated from Amen. our spirits that will Amen. bring forth um, divine life, curing every sicknesses and disease in the name Amen. of Jesus. We decree that um, because we are new creatures in Christ Jesus, every covenant that the enemy wants to force upon us because of covenant which those who gave birth to us have done and the evil that they have done before we came. We have received mercy. 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 In the name of Jesus Christ. And we, shall, we cannot be hurt. The enemy shall not exist upon us. The Son of Righteousness shall not afflict us. The Son of God, brother, shall not afflict us in the name of Jesus. We are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. So we do that because we are his righteousness. Therefore, we have citizenship. We are the citizens of the household of faith in the name of Jesus. We are blessed. Amen. We are blessed on our side. In Jesus. Amen. 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 A brief, a brief, some brief announcement. Thank you very much all for coming. Right. We can see that it's going to do technical, but we're going to leave this very technical place very soon. This is the most uh, non-graphic technical, technical part. The other parts, maybe from two weeks' time, will begin to be very graphic. Put pictures there, we'll see what we're talking about, what we're talking about, high priest and all of that. We won't spend so much time. Maybe what we don't do is that we can cut, I'll discuss with Tayemi about this, so that we can, maybe we cut the lessons in two, but the danger is that I don't want people who came for one not to come for two, so that we can have a month or three weeks of the holiday, and then, then we do another six weeks, you know, and all that, so that it, don't, it doesn't become just one stretch that may be tiring for some uh, for whatever that is being. All right. Praise the Lord. So um we could not um can we can we um can we mute? Can we all mute? Um somebody's uh, system is unmuted. Okay. Um we tried to send week nine the regular way, but it didn't go. It didn't all go. Okay. Okay. Auntie Kemi says she doesn't have a particular week. Okay, maybe it's the one I'm talking about now. We didn't have week nine, which we had. Uh... Ah. Auntie Kemi says she has only week four. Or um, she doesn't have just week four. Do you, know you have? I don't have of the weeks. I've looked at my emails, gone to the spam. The only one I have is week four. Ah. So okay. I went um, to YouTube to rewatch okay what okay if you have tried everything possible and you are not able to get it i think i have anti chemist number already what would you do that would just send it to you on whatsapp you send it to you thank you sir yes sir and then eventually if gmail keeps cleaning us up like this we may have to get people's whatsapp so that we can just send it to them you know um for those, especially for those who are not getting it. But if everybody, almost everybody did not get week nine, but we now shared it. The sharing is that you would have to do some uh, tappings, you know, so that you can open it. It's different from just going to your mail and seeing it. All right. God bless you. 
Uh, okay, Sister, Sister Inka, is she still around? Okay, Sister, yes, I'm... okay, Sister Inka, you pray for us to close the meeting. Father Lord, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you. We thank you for the word that we have heard on tonight. We thank you that this word has fallen onto good ground and it will bring forth a hundredfold. We thank you for clarity. We thank you that even as we mull on this word and as we leave this place, the light of the of the word will come and it will illuminate all of our understanding. Father, we thank you, God, for the kingdom. And we thank you for learning about it and the beginnings and, and the foundations, oh Lord. Lord, we ask, oh God, that you bless each and everyone that's heard this message today. And as they go from this place, they grow in your word. We thank you for our teacher, Pastor Matthews. Lord, that you continue to bless him and you continue to be with him and you continue to illuminate his understanding and give him wisdom beyond his head. Lord, we thank you for all that we're hearing and all that you've taught us. Blessed be your name, O oh Lord, God. Thank you for your love towards us, your loving kindness that's better than life, that never, ever fails. Blessed be your name, O oh Lord, God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. 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 Thank you very much, everyone. Good night. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you. 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 Thank you.